and welcome back to So So Vintage. So today we are putting on the pocket and we're putting on the special detail that is not in the book but I've decided to do it. I thought it would be cute so that's going to be my little addition. So we are going to start things off by finishing up the pocket. To do this you're going to need the three pocket pattern pieces that we made earlier. And again in the description are all the pieces you will need for making this apron. The first piece you're going to need is the upper pocket, which is three and a half by six and a half inches. You are going to need the lower pocket, which is five and a half by six and a half inches. And finally, you'll need the pocket piping, which is two inches by six and a half inches. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is we are going to take our pocket strip and we're going to fold it in half, wrong sides together. And once it's folded in, folded in half, we're going to run it over to the iron and we're going to just press that so it's nice and crisp. You're going to take your largest pocket strip, you're going to lay it face up and you want the six and a half side to be on top. Then you're going to take your freshly pressed pocket strip and you're going to lay that right on top. And you just want to match your raw edges and I'm going to pin at the very edge of where the fold is in my pocket strip. So away from the end that's going to be stitched. So there we go. And now all we're going to do is we're going to run a stitch right along the top as close to the edge as we can. Okay, and now that that's stitched together you just want to take your pinking shears and you just want to trim right along the edge. With the wrong side up of your fabric, you are now going to fold the edge, the bottom edge of it, half an inch up. So essentially you're folding the exact opposite edge that you just stitched. Then I'm going to take this over to this uh, ironing board and I'm going to press that. Now with our larger pocket pressed, we are going to lay that face up. Then we're going to take our smaller pocket piece and we're going to lay that, with the, lay that wrong side up right on top of what we've already stitched matching the raw edges. And again just throw in a, a, in a pin or two just to keep it from sliding around. So now we should have something that looks like this and on the other side it looks like this so you've got you go. Know, and now all we're going to do is we're going to do a half inch seam down the length of this. So now what we want to do is we want to take this over to the iron and we're going to press it. You want to press it so that this large seam is going up and that this strip in the front is laying towards laying down. This is the part in the book where things get a little confusing. So what I've been doing, I fold over the top part of the pocket half an inch like we did on the bottom and then I press this. Fold this over so it just covers this very last stitch here and then I pin it. Do that on the opposite end as well. And what we are going to do is we are going to do a half inch seam. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we are going to fold over the edges and being able to do that on half inch is um, really easy because we've already got this stitch right here on the side. So basically you're just going to fold it over right there all the way down and then you're going to press that. Okay, so everything is all pressed. What you're going to want to do though is you're going to want to turn it over and lay it down so that all edges are tucked in and you want to just double check that you don't have any stray piece of material that is kind of poking out because the way it looks right now is the way it's going on to the um, apron. So you want to make sure it looks nice and neat. So before we start uh, stitching this onto the apron we are going to slip stitch close this um, flap here. So go ahead and take your needle that just has a standard um, knot at the end and you'll want to slip it into the fabric. We're going to go into the fold of the fabric right there. We're going to go into the fold of the fabric on the edge there and just pull it through. Then we are going to grab just a tiny bit of the fabric here and pull it through and just continue to do that all the way down just like we did earlier in the last video. 
We are now going to take our pocket and we are going to lay it on the apron. We want to make sure it's in the right position. I'm going to place my ruler right down here at the bottom, right between my two darts. So I know that the space between my darts is about nine and a half inches. And I'm just going to line up. So now I'm going to go ahead and pin this down. And all we're going to do now is we are going to stitch in place and you just want to be as close to the edge as possible because the farther you come in with the stitching, the smaller the actual um, space inside the pocket is going to be. So try to just keep it as close to the edge as you can, just be consistent with the width of stitch. Okay, so there we go. That is our pocket all sewn on. So I think that looks great. I think it pops against the our very colorful fabric but now let's get to the extra special that I have planned for this okay so this is for our super secret customization of this apron but I will reveal what it is we are going to make a bow so I have cut out two pieces of fabric essentially approximately seven and a half or I should say I guess it's uh seven and a half inches wide and four and a half inches tall. So we're gonna put the uh, fabric right sides together and we are just going to get do a quarter of an inch stitch all the way around it. And you want to be sure that to leave at least uh, an inch to an inch and a half gap here so that we can turn the fabric right side out when we're done. Okay, so now that it's all stitch up, we are just going to start to pull it through our opening. Yeah, you want to make sure that you're getting nice crisp corners. So go ahead and just kind of work those corners out. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take this over to the iron and we are going to press it nice and flat. And then we are going to come back and you're just going to use your favorite method. And you're just going to kind of squeeze the ends of the fabric together and uh, give it a quick stitch to close that up. Basically the same way we did when we finished up our stitching the lining onto our apron. Okay, now you're gonna wanna cut a strip that is three and a half by two and three fourths, and you are gonna fold it together and you're gonna do a quarter of an inch stitch here on the bottom. Now don't press this because we don't want to have a crisp seam on this at all at this point. Then using your pinking shears, go ahead and just give it a quick little trim right next to that seam. Now let's turn it right side out. Now we're going to press it, but you want to make sure that the seam is on the back. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to fold this in half so we match up the raw edges and that the seam is showing on the outside. And we're just going to, again, with a quarter of an inch, stitch right at that very edge there. Okay, you know what? I changed my mind. Do um, about an inch and a half seam on that because we want that to be pretty small. So now that that seam is in, I'm going to use your pinking shears and cut right through that and then we're going to flip this around. Now we're going to take our bow and we're going to slide it through. Oh that looks so cute guys! Look how adorable that looks! And the cuteness is not over. I'm so pleased with that. So what I did is I went to Michael's and I got some of these really cute like turquoise skulls. I actually have a, a bracelet that my nephews gave me that have these on it and I absolutely love them. I love the aging on them and I thought it would just look so cute um, added to the apron. Now I want to put them on the bow. If I just put one little skull there, look it gets lost among the polka dots. So what I also did is I got these and then we're going to put one little skull in the middle. Oh, it looks super cute. Okay, I got these in the bead aisle, um, but what I also got was these little pins because you want to be able to wash the apron 
but you don't want to th be throwing these or any type of um, bead or jewelry piece. Just go into the beading section. They have a lot of really fun stuff. They have charms and things like that. And you want to find something that's a little oversized, but not so big that it's going to completely distract. Now, before we start stitching jewelry on, or if you chose buttons, because buttons would actually be a bit easier, you want to make sure that your bow looks like you like it to be. This one, it's looking great. I'm just going to maybe turn down the ends here. And um, my seam is right where I want it. So now I can go ahead and start stitching the bead piece on. Now the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take a needle just a standard knot at the end. I'm gonna kinda just hold the bead on there. Now we're gonna have to start at the back. So we wanna hide the uh, knot. But we also want to sneak our thread up so we can get it right into the bead once we pull the thread through. Okay, now we're gonna string it through the bead, up through the top, not into your finger like I'm currently doing. <laughs> And then we're going to put it right through the fabric in the back there. Now you will see the thread in the middle. Our skull is going to be hiding that. So I'm going to continue to do that just a few more times to make that nice and secure. And then we're going to come back and put our skeleton in. Oh, didn't he look so cute? It looks so cute. Um, and essentially, it's gonna it's gonna work the same way. We're just going to it's a a top thread as well. So we're just gonna do the same thing, but we're gonna do it within the um, piece there. Once again, we're starting with a needle with a standard knot on the end, and we are going to flip over our bow, you poke through the bow from the back, and you want to make sure that you're coming your needles coming in at the very bottom and right through right through the stitching. Now pull that through. Then you're going to take your skeleton head. You're going to go right through the top with the needle. And you really want to nestle that head in. Now, you're going to want to make sure that your needle goes in as close to the top of this bead as possible and right center into the stitching because we want to make sure that when we, when we pull our little skeleton head up that he is a center. Look at, oh my gosh, tell me that's not adorable. And then, um, same thing we did the last time, we're just going to throw more stitches in there because we want to make sure, and you want to make sure that it stays taunt um, because you don't want his head wiggling too much around in there. So we're just going to um, run the stitching through there a couple more times, make it nice and strong. There we go. That is our adorable bow for our apron. Now we are going to take these bar pins and I did choose the ones that have three holes in them so um, they're a little bit longer. It's an inch wide so you just want to kind of center it onto the fabric and I am going to bring my needle right behind the fabric and just poke it right through. And then I'm going to string that on. And then I'm actually going to go to the last one here, end of the fabric at the end here. And because obviously you don't want to go through to the front of the fabric because you don't want the stitching to show up there. You're just going to want to try to weave in and out of the tube that the centerpiece that we have here. They're pretty messy, but I didn't want to rely solely on a glue gun for this because that could easily come apart. Um, so <laughs> I'm gonna, we're going to add a bit of both. So now with the glue gun, I'm just going to get behind the bar here and squeeze in a good amount of glue. So now I'm just going to press down on our bar here. Now careful, it does get hot, even if you're not, because it's metal, so even if you're not in direct contact with the glue, it is going to get a little hot. And so there we go. I've gone ahead and added it onto the apron at a jaunty little angle. Looks super cute. Now, um, 
one thing I did notice is my friend is a bit shorter like I am um, and the uh, necktie here was a bit longer than needed for her height so I have pulled back and pinned about um, two inches which I guess you know wrapped around would be four inches here um, and then I'm going to actually cut that and restitch that so be sure to try your apron on especially with the um, with the different sizings the neck strap is going to depend on the size that you're making so if you are a bit shorter you might need to take the neck strap up turn my straps around want to make sure that they're even here at the base and then go to where I have it pinned pull the pin out and repin it on the opposite side now you will want to slip this over your head or slip it onto your mannequin and give it a test but once it's good you are going to stitch right across the way here is you're going to take your pinking shears and you're going to trim but here's my stitch and here's where I'm trimming so you don't want to trim right next to stitch because now what we're going to do is we're going to open that up then we're going to fold this edge in and then we're going to stitch right here. It does make it a bit bulky, but it, it, it will stop it from fraying, number one, most important thing, and number two, it gives it a nice finished edge. Here's the finished product, as you can see, our fabulous customized addition to the apron. Looks so fun, so flirty, along with this really contrasting pocket, which is big enough to hold a recipe card or any utensils that you need and the darting on to the apron really gives it more of a shape and then we've got the great ties in the back again with this contrasting polka dot fabric and they're extra long so if you want if you're one of those people who like to wrap it around and tie it in the front you can do that as well and I love just the added detail of the inside of the apron as well who doesn't like a ruffle? I don't think an apron is a great apron without a fabulous ruffle. That is the end of our <laughs> retro apron sewing project. I hope you guys really like it. I love the way it turns out. I think my friend is going to adore it. And honestly, I think my favorite part of this apron is our added bow with the skull detail on there. I think it just makes it look just extra cute and gives gives it that personal touch and you can really do anything with what you put onto the bow so i hope you guys really enjoyed so so vintage and next week we are coming to you with a really short diy project that you can get done in one day in just a couple hours it's super fun and especially if you like to wear those vintage hats this is going to be a great little project for you as well. So I will see you next week for our DIY project. But if you want even more of my face today, go ahead and check out my other videos. As always, I love hearing from you guys in the comment section below. Go ahead, leave me your tips, um, your suggestions on what you might have done a little bit different. Plus, I just love hearing from you guys. As always, give it a big thumbs up to let me know that you like this sewing series and you want to see more of it. And if you're new to a vintage vanity and you don't want to miss a minute of what goes on here go ahead and click the subscribe button which is right there it's gonna you know let you know when new videos are up so you don't miss anything and as always I hope you guys have a great day and I will see you on Tuesday bye